Jury selection, it has just begun at the Joe Prococo corruption trial. Now, this trial, it is gaining a ton of attention for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is who Prococo worked for. He was a top Cuomo aide and also very close for many, many years to the Cuomo family. Our own Dominic Carter, he's at the federal courthouse in lower Manhattan with more. Dom? Well, good evening to you, Richard. Federal Judge Valerie Caproni was determined to complete this jury process going way past 5.30 p.m. today. We can tell you as of right now, the jury consists of seven women, five men, and it's racially diverse. Testimony hasn't even started yet. How's it going in there? What about you? But considering Joe Pacoco's close relationship to Governor Cuomo as a former longtime aide and close friend, Cuomo corruption, stop CBD. Environmental protesters were out bright and early this morning against the governor. Right before federal judge Valerie Caproni started with groups of 20 potential jurors at a time, questioning them one by one. Pococo's lawyer was concerned the impact the protesters might have on possible jurors walking into the courthouse. His lawyer, Barry Barr, told Judge Caproni this was very problematic. The judge responded, let's pick the jury, adding, let's make sure the jury can disregard it. Governor Cuomo has said Prococo was like his father's third son. Prococo is accused by federal prosecutors of taking at least $315,000 in bribes in return for official actions on behalf of an energy company and a developer. On the jury questionnaire form, one question was, have you followed the trials of public officials in recent years? Many of them had, specifically mentioning Bridgegate, Senator Menendez, and Sheldon Silver. Some of the potential jurors used terms like they thought all politicians were crooks or liars. Meanwhile, Republicans hoped the trial and the fact that Cuomo was up for re-election for governor this year will help weaken the two-term Democrat and possible presidential candidate. State Republican Chairman Ed Cox was here at the courthouse. Republicans plan on releasing an ad later this week. But Mr. Chair, the governor is not on trial, it's Pococo on trial. No, the governor's on trial too, Dominic, because he is the most politically corrupt governor in New York in more than a century. So what's left now, Richard, opening arguments now that we have a jury, and that could come conceivably as early as tomorrow. Reporting from the federal courthouse in Lower Manhattan, I'm Dominic Carter. Richard, let's go back to you in the studio. All right, Dom. Uh, now, as you just heard there, everyone is waiting and watching to see how this whole thing will impact Governor Cuomo. And obviously, this does not happen in a vacuum. It's an election year. New York Democrat, he's got a 50% approval rating, which, if you listen to the last segment, is substantive, at least in today's day and age. Only a quarter of the people disapproving of the job that Andrew Cuomo is doing. Um, you know, every Wednesday I bring in a bunch of attorneys. We'll talk about the legalities. I'm still confused uh, what corruption is defined as anymore after all these trials and reversals, et cetera, let alone uh, acquittals. But um, forgetting quid pro quo for a minute, this is uh, huge stakes for Andrew Cuomo. And moreover, um, there could be a lot of moving parts here, especially since reportedly Joe Prococo's wife um, was at the center of this in that uh, she got paid for functions that she didn't necessarily do or that there was using basically his offices or access to benefit his family through monies. More people could be charged out of this. Um, I got to think um, you got a certain captive audience in Albany watching this trial unfold. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. There's a captive audience of people who are watching, but I think we're still a long ways off, or at least a ways off from tying this directly as much as Ed Cox would like to, tying this directly to the governor. And, you know, because you have to not only, to your point, find Prococo guilty, and that is a huge hurdle now given what the Supreme Court has done, but you've then got to tie that back to the governor. And I'm not certain that's going to be incredibly easy to do. Oh, it I might think be everybody's hard. going to be watching it, but I'm not sure it's going to be easy. And let's not forget, Republicans really don't have anybody to run no. against the governor no. either. So that's a whole and nother element And the only four candidates we heard didn't, but, but to, <laughs> Andrew, 
I think it will be hard to prove, and I'm basing this off of federal prosecutors I've talked sure. about, about the case. But again, at the crux of this, it is Perkirko left the governor's um, office. He went into, in effect, private practice, started a lobbying firm. What do lobbyists do? Lobbyists sell influence. You come to me, I'll be able to get you access or whatever else. I'm not even doing that with criminal aspersions, but that's the premise of being a lobbyist. You use influence. What influence would he have? He would have had influence with his former boss. There is the allegation and the charges that in using said influence or offering said influence, he was enriched as a consequence mm -hmm. of it. What did they think that they were, in effect, paying for? It's going to be the argument at the trial. Yeah, I don't... I don't in, to, to counter what Jeannie was saying, I don't think the big fear in Cuomo land is that Prococo is found guilty, because I think that's, as you were talking about, in this day and age, we don't even know what corruption means anymore. But it's the details of... That, that we might learn during the course of the trial about how Cuomo operates or what the expectation was from his closest aide about how Cuomo might operate that might give you some insight into other things that he's done that don't come into the uh, that don't come into this trial specifically and it's also the, the the cumulative effect of all of this for Cuomo that that I think is the bigger concern whatever the details come through from he, from this over the weekend there was a report that Cuomo basically stepped in and asked the MTA to change the definition of what an electric related emergency is on the on the subway system so that he could blame Con Ed for a lot of the problems at the subway. He basically inflated the numbers to make the MTA look better and to make Con Edison look worse. Uh, and and that's coming out. The, the Democrats and progressives are pit, are, are upset, <laughs> pardon me. Uh, it's a Trumpian environment, I apologize. Uh, because he hasn't called special elections and in two Democratic seats, one in the Bronx and one in Westchester. And now, even if he does call those special elections, those seats can't be filled in time for the budget to be set up uh, by the end of March. Uh, there are still questions about funding well, for other projects. A there, lot of there, what you're saying, everything is true. It's a lot of paper It's codes. inside baseball. But the press question is, at this point, with some naked political actions by governors who've gotten in trouble and other elected officials, there's got to be a there there for the public to then say it's the governor. Yeah, and I think the bigger problem for him is running for president. Yeah, totally. I think that's where I think it impacts him. When we come back, we're going to go across the river to New Jersey. It is only week two of the Phil Murphy era, and the Democratic governor already has a list of things that he wants to do that will undo what Chris Christie did. We'll explain right after this.